The Department of Agriculture lists 3,700 farmers markets happening on any given weekend in the Great 48. If you do a quick Google search of the words farmers market, you'll find an LA Times article crediting the first farmers market as happening in Los Angeles in 1934. This humble Wisconsin foodie host happens to know several that started as early as 19, 19 in our state. We've come to the Elkhart Lake Farmers Market to meet the expert, Chef Lynn Chisholm, owner and chef of the Paddock Club, to take us through all the terrific things that this region has got to offer. Hi, Lynn. Hello. How are you? Great. How are you? Good. Thanks for the private tour of the cool farmers market. No problem. My pleasure. I've just had the world's greatest apple. I know. Aren't they amazing? Yeah. What are you excited about here? I, I'm really excited about these purple Brussels sprouts right here. They're really cool looking. They are. And you they know, we look, don't see them every day. They look prehistoric and they look <laughs> sort of... I'm glad I'm with an expert who knows how to handle this. <laughs> this one looks great. Now, she said that these, this variety is a little sweeter than the other kind. That can be, the greener ones can be a little spicier. How strong of a resource is this for you? If I can support anyone in the community, yeah. like they support us, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely for it. Makes so. good sense. It does. So you train slash apprentice with some of the best chefs and some of our, luckily, our show's great friends. I mean, Adam Siegel, James Beard Award winning, um, Par Barlotta, as in the Par Barlotta restaurants, but, you know, two Michelin star kind of guy. So what, like, keeps you awake at night with excitement as far as how you're cooking here? You know, it's, I, I like to focus on seasonality when I can mm -hmm. um, with using classics as a root of what I do okay. and using great ingredients, keeping it simple and, you know, definitely balancing flavors and texture and, you know, taking a, a pretty simple dish and adding a little sophistication to it by, I think, executing it well. And I think that's something... Half I, of it, yeah. Execution, I think, is everything. And, you know, I definitely learned um, from Paul and Adam and everyone at the Bartoladas. Right. You know, how to do that. How to do that, definitely. Yeah. Details are everything. We're going to go from outside to inside to your kitchen and you're going to cook some fabulous lunch, right? Absolutely. Well, what are we waiting for? I know. Let's go. All right. Uh, wow, Chef Chisholm, this is a pretty amazing open kitchen. Thank you. This is home for me. So what's for lunch? Duck confit and foie gras ravioli. All right. Well, let's see how this thing works. All right. I'm going to go grab my chef coat. Wow, Lynn, this is an amazing kitchen. And what do we have here? This is a little veal sauce with Strauss veal. Okay. I've just gone from hungry to ravenous. So let's get on that ravioli. Fantastic. So now that we're at the workstation, what is the first step? Let's, let's clean these Brussels sprouts. Nice. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to cut each sprout off. It does look a little dangerous, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So what are you doing to the Brussels sprouts right now? I'm cutting the end off and then I'm taking the core out right here because what I'm going to do is we're just going to use the leaves as a garnish on the ravioli. Don't be cool. shy now, Kyle. You can help. I've been known to overdo it though, so if I tear this thing to oblivion, just stop me. I used to call them little evil cabbages when I was younger. <laughs> All right, I think this is a good start. Yeah? Yeah. And we're going to set these aside. We're going to blanch them off when we cook the ravioli. It's also the difference between a chef and someone like me. You do that while you're looking at me and you don't even worry about it. It took a while. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Just a... I'd do it and everyone would call me righty for the rest of my life. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Okay, so the Brussels sprouts are brussled. They are brussled, yes. <laughs> what are we doing next? We're going to sear the foie gras. Oh. All right, so we're going to make sure that we get the pan very, very hot. The foie gras has such a high fat content that you, you just want to sear it. And if I yeah. put it in there now, it would just leach out all the fat. It would kind of melt in the pan. Wow, does that smell amazing, almost Doesn't immediately. Doesn't it? It's so yeah. rich. It's incredible. It's going to caramelize really nicely on that one side, and we're going to get some nice flavor from that. God, that is so incredibly rich and fragrant and just amazing. So I'm going to turn the heat off for just a minute. Um, you want to cook it so it, you, know, you can test it as you go. It's going to feel firm in the center, and then it's going to go soft. 
Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cool it down and I'm gonna just put it in the refrigerator for a little bit. This is the duck cone fee. Okay. So basically you're gonna season it with salt and pepper. Some people cure it overnight and I'm just gonna rough cut it here. I already pulled it off the bone. That's a true chef term, rough cut? Yep. I'm gonna add our herbs. Seems like a good move. Doesn't it? All right, so we're gonna start with caramelized onions. I think a little butter, just a little bit of butter. So I'm gonna add my foie gras. Mm -hmm. So now we're mixing it with the diced up coffee and the herbs. Yep. Okay. And I'm gonna put a little salt and a little pepper. Okay, so we're gonna use this pastry bag to pipe our filling into the ravioli molds. Yep. So we're gonna cut this. Okay. You can only do so much. We're going to spray a little bit of water. That's sort of what helps the, sort of the glue to get the yep. dough together? Yep. I'm just gonna press down, kind of putting, coming right up on top of it. Okay. I'll flip it out. That is so gorgeous, by the way. All right, so the pasta is going to go in, and we're going to add our Brussels sprout leaves. Oh, finally! Right cool. away. Pasta is ready. We're gonna go right in this sauce here. Nice. So you do this dish what time of year? I think you could do this all any all winter long all if you wanted long. to. Okay. It's yeah. very comforting, or yeah. you know. Yeah. And look at the color on these Brussels God, sprout that's leaves. Amazing. They almost turn turquoise. Yeah. So now that we have this amazing work of art. Um, What's the next step? I think you know the answer to that. Fair enough, let's go eat. All right, sounds okay. good. Nice. Uh, I think you should, yeah, do the first honors. I think I should serve you. Oh, no, 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 nonsense. So I had a farmer's market morning, now I'm having lunch with the chef. Um, it's, uh, I like Alcard Lake. Isn't it fun? <laughs> yeah. Nicely executed chef. Kyle, thank you so much for coming out today. Lynn, this has been really, really great. And even better, a rumor on the street is that you're going to come and do a second recipe in the Milwaukee Public Market kitchen for us. This is true, yes. Will you give me the uh, sort of menu you're going to be pursuing? I'm not sure. I think you might just have to wait and see. Okay, she doesn't trust me. Um, well then I'll get out of your hair. I'm gonna go drink some wine with Jessica, see the rest of Elkhart Lake, but really thanks for being on the show. Thank you.